Hello and welcome to the program. Yemi Balum is my name, and you know what? The gentleman I have in the studio today is a wonderful man of God. I love him so much, and it's because we came from the same kind of background. He was a Muslim, and I was a Muslim, and we entered into this kingdom of God, totally radicalized for Christ. And he is by the name Pastor David Richman Olayinka of a ministry in Ireland known as the Powerhouse International. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It's good to have you here, and we thank God for your life. Thank you for the love, sir. You flew in from Ireland this morning. Yeah. How was the journey? It was good. Anything for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> what about the ministry? How is the ministry going? God is helping us. The Bible says they went everybody, everywhere preaching, the Lord working with them, confirming the world with signs, signs and wonders. So Praise he's the Lord. doer of the work. Faithful is he who calls us. Who also does it. You know, I know your church has several branches across Ireland. How many branches roughly? Well, we have four main branches and three subsidiary branches. They're like campus fellowships. Campus fellowships. On which universities? The University of Galway, Atlantic Technological University, and um, um, Transatlantic University of Shannon. Praise yeah, but we're still spreading. <laughs> wow. We'll be talking about the branches later. But then I know to be able to succeed on that level in Ireland, you must have a deep relationship with God and even an encounter. I'm sure you must have had several encounters. What can you share with us? Yeah, um, you know, it is not possible for God to send a man without giving him a rod. And one of the ways through which God gives us rods, like Moses, the rod of Moses, is that he gives us several encounters. As a matter of fact, in between the time that I got born again and right now, the encounters are innumerable. Wow. <laughs> many, many of them. Some are struggling to have even one encounter. So you have several encounters. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, the Bible says, Call unto me, I will answer you, and so you great and mighty things that you do not know. For instance, I will give you one of the encounters now. Recently, I discovered that it's been a long time that my two boys, have come to me to share revelations because they usually see Jesus, they see so many things. Sometimes they will say, God sent me, go and preach. And they actually preach. They do a lot of artistic work, drawing heaven, drawing so many things. And so on. So I discovered that it's been about six months that not each, none of them has come to me to tell me that they saw any vision. So in the middle of the night, I was very burdened. Then I began to pray, Almighty oh God, open the eyes of these boys. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let them see you. Because I know it is not possible to teach the faith of the Lord Jesus without God revealing himself. Nobody will catch it. God, you will teach, but God has to reveal himself. If God does not reveal himself to the person you are teaching, they will never catch it. And it's several encounters that produce many, many people that become giants in the faith. I was just trying to lie down to sleep. It was around towards early in the morning, like around 6 a.m., the youngest boy, I believe, I just woke up, hoo, 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 because we made them sleep in our room sometimes. Hoo, 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 hoo. I cannot even describe it. I cannot even describe it. I say, what is it? I say, it must be Jesus, because that just finished praying. It must be Jesus. He said, yeah, I saw the sun shining. He was so bright. I saw it shining on me. He was so bright. Then I lay down back. I said, thank you, Lord. I've not even started sleeping after praying before. If anybody seeks the Lord, he will find him. According to uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus was very emphatic over there. He said, ask, it shall be given. Seek, it shall find. Knock, and the doors shall be opened unto you. For anyone who asks, shall receive. Anyone who seeks, shall find. Anyone who knocks, the doors shall be opened unto him. So if anybody asks him, he will give them. Praise God. Recently, a couple got married in our church. And... The girl that was married is one of those girls that had been with me for a number of years. And uh, every other person's life was moving on well, academically, maritally. Her life was not that moving on well, especially in the area of marriage. And she was the oldest of all of them. So one Friday, we were to have a prayer meeting. My wife had not come back because I need to pick her to the prayer meeting. So I began to pray. Hmm. This is how encounters come. I began to pray. I said, Lord, I was just so burdened about her. Who is this girl's husband? 
Because a lot of people are coming for the girl, very beautiful, but it's not ending up in whatever. And so many of them don't, are not even suitable the way I look at them. As soon as those words fell out of my mouth, I was taken into a trance. Wow. Then I saw a man. He was in a church. Around my right hand, he was quoting the Bible. He was praying. He was figuratively talk, I mean, figurously talking about the things of God. Then I came out of that trance. And I said, but God, I saw the back of the man. I don't see the face. As the words came out of my mouth, I was taken back to the trap. So I saw the face. I came out. I said, wow. They're married now. Wow. The man is the branch pastor of our church in Athlone. Young man is, is uh, almost a lawyer now. You know, he works in a pharmaceutical industry, but he's also studying law. The guy is also into uh, law and accounting. That's the way. If anybody calls upon God, he said he will hear us. He will show us great and mighty things which we know of. No, not. And the word so there means it can either reveal to us or manifest. Wow. You know? So, you know, as, as you're talking, something came to my mind. I'll say two things. Number one, I believe you're going to have to start looking at the possibility on coming onto the, onto the United Kingdom. I know you're in Ireland. Ireland is, you know, in a way, part of us to hold conferences, even if it's once a year, to start teaching people, especially the young people, these things you're talking about. A lot of ministers don't teach them. So the children don't even come to church because they haven't experienced God. When they come to church, nothing happens. Because I picked something from what you said now, that you are burdened. Of course. And a lot of ministers are not burdened, so they don't hear. Ministry is a product of bodies. By the time you are no longer having anybody, leave it. Wow. Leave ministry. My ministry is a product, a back-to-back -back bodies is the body. If you read the book of the major prophets, even some of the minor prophets, you see the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord concerning Egypt, the burden of the Lord concerning Jerusalem. You know, by the time God is no longer giving you burdens, he has called it quit with you in ministry because God can actually fire you without letting you know. Like he did Samson. Yeah, and like he did Saul. Saul was 40 years reigning as a king. But only two years God was with him. And they didn't know God has departed from him. And there are so many people like that also. Both Christians and ministers alike. You know, who wow. still believe they have Christ and it's, it's gone out of the window. Just like when Jesus was talking to the seven churches in the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Some of them have a name that they are alive, but at last they were dead. Wow. So when God is no longer giving you burdens, he has stopped using you. He is no longer interested in you. Man of God, I could be here all day listening to you. <laughs> because we did an interview with a gentleman in America. He had a heart attack, he died. He said when he got into heaven, he met the Lord. And the Lord told him that he, the Lord, is not in 90% of the churches on this planet. Of course. What do you think is responsible for that? For instance, I had an encounter also on the 15th of February, which I've shared a lot of the time, 15th of February. Uh, 2015. It was around 2.45 a.m. My wife and I were praying. We were asking the Lord, what is the next phase of this ministry? What should we do next? And we just lay down to sleep. As soon as I slept, I was taken into a, into a trance. It took 30 minutes. But to me, it was like two minutes. I saw myself at the gate of heaven. The way I'm talking to you was the way I was talking to angels. I saw the gate. I, I saw the gate of heaven. It was a transit between heaven and hell. The gates are joined together, one side to hell, but the gate where everybody separate. And I was talking to the angel, very cool. The way you are is the way the angels were. Very cool. They are not antagonistic. They are not agitated. They just obey the command of the Lord. They are not. They are not hateful, and they don't show too. They don't show extreme love. Also, they just normal, very cool and corporate. And I was asking the angel, I said, Ah, I've come. Go and open the gate. Let me enter. And the angel said, Let me check whether the gates are locked or open. And the angel came back and said, the gate are locked. I said, it's not possible. I'm a born again Christian, the gate cannot be locked. And then he moved towards, the angel moved towards the gate of hell, and there was a black book there. There, he began, the angel began to read to me and said, the Nigerian man, yes, he's always calling upon God. He's always crying. He's always asking for help. But he's an entertainer, a super vain man. And they say, as a result of that, you will go. I began to shout. Nobody told me all this before I died. Nobody told me the, all this before I died. At my back, I already saw a line of born-again Christians who were already going 
to the same place and go clad in something like gray, dark cloth, like this. I turned my back and I woke up. It was 30 minutes. I told my wife, I'm an associate that I brought the other day, Pastor Shadi. It took some time before God began to explain. I said, but you didn't mention any particular sin that I'm committing, whether adultery or lie or whatever. After some time, God explained the, the meaning of the word entertainer. I said, an entertainer is a comedian, a singer, a dancer. Everybody knows that I'm very serious with the word of God. In, in teaching the word of God, in, in living my life, and whatever I'm going to say, that's not what we're talking about. It took some time. Each of the statements of accusation took some time. Now, God now said, sometimes when you preach the truth to people and it's hard on them, you find a way of pampering them to cool it down. You are entertaining them. Wow. That is serious. And that, that is what most people do. Both Christians, not just ministers, because no. a lot of the time when people are talking, they just talk about many churches are not made of just ministers. 90% uh, of churches are made of Christians. We pamper people, we entertain people. And most of the, that's the reason why Jesus has gone by the way, by, by the by the by the uh, by the uh, back door. Man of God, I, sorry to cut in. I was on a program recently. And I had a lady on the program with me. And I was quoting some word from the word of God. It sounded heavy. When I finished delivering, then the lady said, well, she just turned to the camera. Oh, well, no, no one of us is perfect. We are all sinners. <laughs> and by the spirit of God, I was provoked. And I told her, don't ever use that statement to water down the word of God. Yeah. The word of God has gone forth. Yeah. If Paul Apostle has to use that statement on his own messages, then we all yeah, be in we trouble. We are not all sinners. If we are all sinners, we will go to hell. They were sinners. <laughs> so, but they were not you know, preaching to you alone. Yeah. That message that's going to you is affecting them as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's the problem we have in this part of the world. Yeah. They, they, they make it look like, oh, you are holier than thou. Yeah. The guys you are preaching to, are the ones receiving it. But yeah. they don't know that you yourself, yeah. you're, so they always try to, they will have a good message from God. Yeah. But they say, well, we are not all perfect. Yeah, and man. as a result, they leave the people in the pigsty. And a lot of the time they, have, they hide under grace. I had another encounter a number of years ago in 2013. I was just in my time of prayers and God told me, I am going to visit you this weekend. So I got to the pastor's fellowship because I led a pastor's fellowship in God with that time, all the pastors. And I told them, I said, this weekend the Lord said he was going to visit me. Friday I expected him, I didn't see. Saturday I expected him, I didn't see. Sunday night, stroke, Monday morning. An angel of the Lord walked into my room. He was nine foot tall. When I jumped on his chest, I was like a little baby on his wow. chest. And he sat down with a, uh, with a um, uh, uh, writing bird and he began to teach me. While he was teaching me, a number of people were in the congregation who were arguing with what he was teaching. Then I moved towards them and said, how can you be arguing with the word of God? How can you be doing this? By the time I would turn my back, the angel of the Lord has packed the, the writing board and everything out and left. And I asked people, where is he? They say he has left. I ran after him. I couldn't find him. I woke up from that revelation and God said, don't argue with people. Just let the truth do its work. Wow. Man of God. You are loaded with revelation. We thank God, sir. And you know, what you're sharing and the encounters you're talking about, majority of ministers haven't experienced, which is why I believe that God is no respecter of persons, and you have to aggressively carry this truth across the whole of this nation. It's how you're going to do it, <laughs> God will do it, God will help you. Amen. Because the youth need to hear it. Even ministers who are sincere, they will hear it, they will contact you. Because really, what you're sharing is heavy. And I'm going to be discussing some things with you when the program is over. And I believe you need to come on the program I have called The Twilight Zone to share this. Because this I'll is be very happy. highly supernatural. We're going to be talking about encounters. So, but I'll today, to. let's stick to this agenda, agenda. How can people, because you see so many Christians, and you wonder, are these ones born again? They tell lies, they fornicate, they do all sorts. You know, what is it that keeps them in that kind of state and they're not soundly, like you say, born again? They're, they're not committed to the things of the Spirit. Yeah, one of the things I found out because um, I started out my journey with deeper life. 
31 years ago. From there, I moved to other churches. And along the line, I see a lot of compromises. And this is one of the things I've observed. You know, Peter was talking about being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible of the word of God that lives and abides forever. A lot of people got into Christianity, which is not actually Christianity, but churchianity. All right? As a result of sensationalism. Yeah, people are asking, oh, if you come to Christ, Christ is going to help you, he's going to heal you, he's going to make you rich, he's going to make you do it, make you... No, born again Christianity is based on eternity. Jesus was very emphatic about it. He said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things will be added to you. Yes, all other things will be added, those are secondary, but the main focus is eternity. Now, before Jesus came here, people were rich like Solomon. People were rich like Job. Jesus didn't come, us, come here to give us riches. People were getting married in the days of Noah. People were giving him marriage and all of those forever. But you see, if those are the basis through which people come to Christ, then the foundation on his own, like Paul was saying in 2 Timothy from chapter 2 from verse 19, he said the foundation of the Lord stands so, having the seal, the Lord knows those who are his. So it's not everybody that is in Christ that claims to be in Christ that are his. He said, uh, because in a great house there are, and he said, let everyone who his name with Christ depart from iniquity. If the Christianity you come into is not the one that has made you to first of all depart from iniquity, wow. you, are not in it, you are not in it yet. You are not. A lot of people say they are born again Christian. They have their boyfriends. They have their girlfriends. Everything they were doing, they are still doing it. They just say, if you believe the Lord Jesus in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you are saved. No. That's not what Paul was saying because James clarified it. Faith without works is dead. dead. It's not just about grace. Faith is work. We were saved by faith, by, by, by faith through grace, not of works, lest any man be born. But faith is work, is an act. Wow. Man of God, yeah. then, you know, now that you've broken that down, and I believe this recording has to touch so many lives because yeah. you are releasing some deep th truth here. When one gets born again, how do you sustain your Christian growth? That is, number one thing is that the person has to really be born again because you can't build on a place where there is no foundation <laughs> mm. or on a shaky foundation. Like I've asked, a church members recently, I said, could you build a house on the water? Because even big ships that are on the high seas, you can toss them up like this. And look at the stable studio in which we are right now. Very stable because it has foundation. So somebody has to be born again first. And after being born again, you are midwife to Christ. Amen. Paul, I mean, Peter talked about it in chapter 6 of the book of Acts and verse 4. He said, we will give ourselves continually to prayers and to the ministry of the word. And we see down the line how the number of the disciples multiply. A great number of the priests became obedient to the faith and the word of the Lord spread. So somebody has to be somebody who knows how to pray. I, when I got born again, I was a Muslim who got born again. I got into praying. I used to pray three hours sometimes. It was during the course of praying that I got baptized in the Holy Ghost on my own inside the room. I used to go on fasting. It was not, it was nasty. Fasting was nasty on me, even till today it's still nasty. When I want to fast early in the morning, my, every part of me is calling for food. It's a discipline. <laughs> like somebody once said, without commitment you won't start, without consistency you won't finish, but in the middle of it is discipline. So when somebody can discipline themselves to separate themselves to prayers, like I was telling our church yesterday, I say, if it is one hour you can pray, quiet time, time of devotion to God, you're doing it, and then you study your Bible also, you'll be growing. It may be little, little growth. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. All right, but when somebody does not have any relationship with God in the first place, you won't find prayer joyful. Prayer is so joyful. Prayer is so joyful. When you, I was telling them in the church yesterday, sometimes you can't even talk out anymore because it's a deep, deep color to the TV, it's a deep relation. Sometimes you just lie down there and just pray in tongues and it's just so sweet, you don't even want to leave the place. You don't even want to go out to work, you don't even want to go in. That is what grows you. That is what deep color to the TV, when your heart is calling to God. You just discover, you know Moses was on the mountain for 40 days, he came, his face was glittering. So you, people will just see that you're growing. Like I tell them, I say, it's a little year, it's a little year that has grown me over the course of 31 years. Wow. Yes, and with that, you just discover that every day you have more body from the Lord. Because the more you relate with him, 
the more he gives you his heartbeat. His heartbeat is the body. He keeps you going. He keeps you carrying people along. Wow. Yeah. But then how do you grow in anointing? I think it's the same process. Like if you read the book of uh, Isaiah chapter number 40 from verse 28, he says, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God is never weary. He does not faint. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to those that don't have no might, he increases strength. He said the young and the youth, they will fall and they will faint, you know. But those that wait upon but the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. They will run. They will and not be weary. They will walk. walk the Something happened to me in 2004. For some years I've been fasting and praying. And I was just basically into teaching ministry, teaching faith, teaching how people can be solid. All of a sudden. I just discovered that a barrage, an influx of prostitutes around the Kedja, because I was in the Kedja Aziz, will come to my office. As you're sitting down in front of me, a prostitute was sitting down like that one day. I say, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked her to come to me. Wow. As, as he was seated over there, as I was talking to her, I said, I don't know what the spirit of God will want to do. I said, join your hands with my hand. As I joined my I was even closing my hand from her seat. She jumped up almost up to the ceiling. Bah! She began to roll, deliverance happened, and she began to speak in tongues. Wow. What has happened to a prostitute? She got born again instantly. She got delivered. She got that filled thing. with the Holy Spirit. But they are not, I saw many things like that because I just gave myself to prayer. I just gave myself to prayer. Your weakness will be removed. There is nobody that cannot be anointed. I've seen it. There is nobody that cannot be anointed. There is nobody that cannot be anointed. There is nobody that has monopoly of anointing. And there is nobody that has uh, what this is the ministry God wants you to do. It will not involve any other. I was telling people, they said John the Baptist did not do any miracle. I said, it's not true. He did miracle. He was a prayer warrior. He was praying. When Jesus came to be baptized, was he not under, under his ministry that the heavens opened? And the Holy Ghost came down like a dove. And the voice of the Lord spoke. He was under his ministry. Like we're talking here right now. You are the host here. The heavens get open. The Holy Ghost comes down like a dove. And the voice of the Lord comes. Wow. That's a miracle. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Yeah. That is serious. Yeah, of course. Man of God, I'm coming to Ireland. <laughs> it will be nice. Come spend some time in your church and just sit be, at the be, back and listen. It will be nice. Uh, because you are sharing some stuff. This message you're sharing is not common. Thank God, sir. And I thank God for your life because I've seen great men of God that God used mightily. And it's the realm of prayer. Amen. That is where the power is. Yeah. And I thank God for your life. So how can you now, you know, you've gone to about being sustained in growth as a Christian and uh, growing in anointing. How can you be used of God? Like the place I quoted earlier on, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 19, it said, the foundation of the Lord stands sure, having this seal, having this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who is named with God, who is named with Christ, to depart from any kid. He's in a great house. There are not just fessu of honor, there are also vessels of honor. He says, some made of gold, some made of silver, some made of earth, some made of wood. He says, if a man therefore cleanses himself from all this, it's a man. It's not God that cleanses the man. It's a man. Wow. He shall be a vessel of honor, meet and prepare for the master's use and for every good work. Verse 22 now says, flee youthful lust. If any one of us will cleanse ourselves, My. God will use us. That is no, as a matter of fact, recently God spoke to me towards the end of last year going to the new year, he just stopped me. Number one, he said, not all aspects of my glory have been explored. Wow. I have many aspects of my glory that nobody has explored. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have they entered to the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Another, another place in us, I say, for those who wait on him, for those who cleanse themselves. Don't forget that Joshua said in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5 or 5, verse 5, verse 3, he said, cleanse yourself today for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders. Another thing God now said, he said, I need people to use. I need people who can pastor. There are many people to be pastored, but there are no pastors. Wow. And there are many people who call themselves pastors. But don't forget, Jesus said, these people come to me with their mouth, but their heart is far away from me. Laborers are few. Laborers are few. Pastors are many, but laborers who are the shepherd. Jesus looked at them and he was moved with compassion because they were like sheep without shepherd. But as at that time they had Pharisees and Sadducees, they are scribes, they are teachers of the law. Nicodemus and all of them were there and they thought they were shepherding the sheep of God. 
Even himself had to come to Jesus and say, nobody can do this mighty works except God will do it. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means he was not aligned. He was not properly aligned. So there are so many people all around. We have signposts everywhere, pastors, churches, and whatever. A lot of people have come into this work for what they want to gain because they were not properly born again. So how can they be proper ministers? So God wants to use as many, as a matter of everybody on earth, God wants to use us. But are we ready to relate with him to such an extent where he cleanses us? Out? See, one day what God spoke to me. He said, I, when I look at human beings, and I told it to our church, when I look at human beings, I don't look at human beings, man, fem, fem, female, uh, child, white, black. He said, no, I look at them as vessels. They are either vessels yielded to the devil or vessels yielded to God. So if a person is yielded to God, like a woman like Ketrukuma or Deborah, or a child like uh, Uzziah, he was 16 years old when God started using him, or anybody, anybody that is yielded to God God, will, God, God is interested in using us more than we are praying in being used. My, man of God, time is flying. We're going to have to do this again, but I want to ask you some simple questions. Number one, some watching now will be asking, do you do one-on-one -on -one counseling? I do. All Even the time, with every pe day. people who don't belong to your church? Oh, of course, every day. Number two, do you do deliverance? I do. <laughs> Number <laughs> three, if you're invited to ministries, to ministers somewhere, do you go? Because I hardly see you come out of Ireland. I, I go, I go. Like in the last few months, I've been out of Ireland in the, between September and now. I was in Nigeria twice and I was crisscrossing many ministries. I was in Nigeria in September, I was in Nigeria in November, two weeks in September, one week in, sep in September, using my own fund. Wow. Not uh, taking money I from thank God for your life because there's something that we're going to share concerning funds and everything. And I've been in England three times also. Wonderful. Yeah. I saw one of your videos. You were in a hotel in Nigeria in the middle of the night and you were sharing some yeah, deep that stuff. Yeah, that was free, yeah. That as we're here, many are asleep. Yeah. But the wicked ones. And I didn't know you watched. <laughs> I saw it. I came across it briefly, yes. That's why I thank God for your life. I want to give you just 30 seconds to look in that camera there and just share something that God, just to bless someone. God needs you. Whether at the level of salvation or at the level of elevation. Elevation is the use of God. The use of God is honorable. Blessed, David said, blessed is the man that God causes to come nigh to him. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God needs you wherever, no matter what level you are. Whether like Paul, you have key people, or like other people, you have done so many things like Rehab or whatever. God needs you. Come to him today. He will use you. He will bless you. He will save you. He will heal you. Amen. He will do many things with your life. Amen. 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 Man of God, I really want to thank you so much for coming. And I know we're going to do more of this. And we're going to talk. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, on that note, I want to thank you for watching. And you know what? Take the details. Get in touch with this man of God. And let's keep him busy. Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. Bye for now.